Also, let's talk about the Java syntax, the basic Java syntax that we people follow here. All right. So, in order to create the Java syntax, I hope everybody has got the Eclipse environment set up done on their respective machines. Has everybody got the Eclipse environment done? Because uh, that was the document that had been put up on Adiraga.in for all of you to take references out of and get the Eclipse environment done. All right. Can you all just quickly write it onto the chat window? How many of you have got the Eclipse environment done? I need response from every single attendee. Can you please quickly respond back? All right. So I see that majority of the people have not done it. But a few people would have done it. You could have make uh, taken references out of exactly how the things work here. So in order to get the things work, what I'll do here is I'll create a go, go to file, I'll create a new. I go to file, create a new, and I say new Java project, right? And once I do a new Java project, it is asking me for a project name. So here I have to name the project. I say example, last one. All right. Then it is asking me to choose. All right. Chavi is saying I'm getting a dialog box to enter path of the workspace. So Chavi, you can take any path that you want to actually help. Uh, say I would say house the various classes that you are creating in your application. You can take it to a B directory. You can take it to an E directory. Any place that you want to. Mukesh says he does not have the new Java file option here. Mukesh, have you downloaded the version that was told to you in the document that we had posted up? Have you downloaded the same version, Mukesh? Can you just confirm me that? I, I, I just doubt that which version are you choosing Mukesh because if you might have downloaded the exact version you would have got this complete option coming up. Uh, so here I have a question from Amit and Amit says can we see the source of the dot class file. Uh, Amit it is like a binary file that we get after the bytecode conversion so you cannot get uh, make references out of the source that we have. All right, I'll see to it, Mukesh. If you are not getting it, I'll see to it, and I'll, I think we can resolve, get it resolved after the class. Don't worry about that. All right. So I was creating a sample project here, and it, here it is asking me to choose the runtime environment. So I have got two runtime environments here: 1.5, 1.6. So I have all. So I'll choose the latest one, and then I click on next here. So it is showing me the complete path structuring that it will be creating for me. So I'll just see the path structuring here all right and then i have seen the path structuring is which tells me that it will be containing a source folder under it and i click on finish so once i click on finish i have created a new java application project onto my eclipse window if i go to the file here it shows me a source folder now it does not contain anything so i have to create a new i go to java class so i create a new class and if I name the class, I say example. I say class, example class, and it, every every single class that Java is actually uh, you create in Java is actually having the object as the parent class. So you can see here it is having a modifier which says public class. Then it has a super class which says it is the object super class. And I can if I want to use any interfaces, I can also use any interfaces here, which I won't do now. And here I click on finish. Once I create a class, it, this is how my class structure looks like. In order to run any particular class in Java, you need to have a public static void main method in the class. Uh, I would just tell you about the PSVM or the public static void main in the context. Suppose I have an application, all right, and I have 10 classes in my application. But the entry point to my application is actually derived or confirmed by the public static void main. So any particular class that will be containing the public static void main is the entry point in my application. 
and the public static void main method takes as arguments the string array and it calls them the arguments and this is how a public static void main looks like all right so there are various parameters to the public static void main but public i mean the pub access modifier of this method which is that which shows that it is actually accessible to everyone publicly then we have the static modifier which tells me that this particular method has just got one instance throughout the application all right then i have a void modifier here void argument here so when i talk about a void argument it is just that this particular method does not return anything then i have the key name for it which is the main method so i have this key name associate uh, i have this key name which is very much specific to the main method then i have the string array so when i'm working with the command line arguments all right when i'm working with say i'm doing it on notepad uh, i'm writing my java classes on notepad and i'm doing some execution of the code from the command line then i can also pass in some arguments from the command line to this particular method all right so this is how it works but since we are not using the notepad and we are not using actually the command line too so this is of error, no use to us at present all right so let's output something onto the console here i do a sys out here and i just output this is the first android class Right. So when I do output this, what will happen is this will print out this complete text, which is this is the first Android class on the console. So I do a run as, I say Java application, and here you can see onto the console it is giving me a text here. This is the first Android class. This is very basic, simple system out or say console writing something onto the console that I'm doing here. Any person having any problems with this particular section? you can quickly write it onto the chat window what is public static void mean i have told you that then i created a new class which is a public class then i outputted something onto the console i hope this uh, complete snippet is clear to everyone code snippet that i have followed here is clear to everyone any doubts any questions you can quickly write it onto the chat window amit singh any doubts here that's correct. Uh, Amit has asked me a question here which says, I cannot understand what is string ARGS here. So Amit, when we do develop applications from the notepad or we actually write some code onto the notepad, what we do is we actually run the Java application using the command line utility which is the CMD. So we run it from this utility. All right. So when we try to run this from this utility, what we can do is we can also pass in some parameters like if I want to pass some value onto the my program so I can pass it with the help of the command line utility and I can have that accessed from the arguments here. Mukesh has asked me a question what is system.out.println it is very much like a, a printf uh, that you people might have faced in Java in C plus C and it, it is very much like C out that you people would have used in the C plus plus language Mukesh. I hope it is clear to you now. It is a method. It is not a class. It is a method, uh, Mukesh. All right. Any any other doubts? Any other queries uh, here in the snippet that I have just covered for all of you? All right. So I have a poll question for all of you here. So what if I make give my main method a private modifier? private access modifier what problem I might come across so all of you can see your poll question onto, onto, on the top of your screens is it the compile time error or is it the compile time warning you all can cast your votes onto the polling window that you're seeing on top of your screens so that what exactly should be the problem if I give the my main method of modifier as private so let's see everybody how well you know this modifier concepts so if not I'll be telling you about this so everybody has casted their votes and 86% people have gone with the compile time error and 14% have gone with the compile time warning so the correct answer to it it is the compile time warning that it will show up and let me just show it to you all here since if this is private public 
Now what I need to do is I may need to make it to private. Alright, so here you can see I have got a warning here. Alright, what this warning tells me is let's see what this warning tell me tells me. And it says remove method main or change modifier to final. Alright, so if I try to run this up, let's see since it's not giving me an error here, compile time error is not the one. So if I try to run this up, I get a runtime exception here. And which says selection does not contain a main type. So if I am actually confining this method to be as private, what I'm doing is I'm actually not able to access this method outside the class. So that is why I cannot have this method as private. But since it is not giving me a compile time warning, it is just not giving me a compile time error or in fact. So this is all valid, but it is always it will give, throw up a runtime exception. I hope everybody understands this, why the option B is correct option to it, because it I, I have already showed you it gives me the compile time warning here. Then let's talk about the data type. Alright, say Chavi says she's not getting the console tab here. You're not getting uh, getting this tab onto your Eclipse. What you can do is you can go to you can go to window, you can go to show view and here you can click on the console view. Alright, and then you'll be getting it. Can you just try it once quickly so that you can also confirm whether this is working on your machine or not? Alright, so now she has got the console window here. Alright. Uh, Neha has asked me a question, will this execute with private? No, Neha it will execute with private but will it will give me a runtime exception which says the method is not public or say the method, method is not accessible. So it will run but it will give me a runtime exception here. I'm using the JDK and the JRE both. Amit has asked me a question, are you using Java JDK or any other software? I'm using both. I'm using the JRE and I'm also using the JDK. Amit. I hope this is clear to everyone now. Alright. So I was telling you about the data types now. So data types define the nature of a value. A keyword final was showing. What is its meaning? Neha has asked me a question here. Uh, suppose Neha, if I want to have some constant, so if I if I was using the language C or C++, I had a keyword which was constant, C O N S T. All right. And now for that sake, we have a final keyword in Java. So if I talk about a final a final variable, I cannot make changes to the value of the final variable. And similarly, if I declare a method as final method, all right, so I cannot override those methods. So this is what the final keyword does here. All right, if I also declare a class as final class, I cannot also subclass that class. Neha. So what are data types in Java? So data types are the ones that define the nature of a value. So we need different data types to handle real world information. I hope this is clear to you Neha, can you just quickly write it on to the chat window? Alright, so data types define the nature of a value, we need different data types to handle the real world information. Uh, Chavi has asked me how can we calculate the range of any data type. It is just that the range of the data, but the, the data type is actually dependent on the number of bits that it carries. So here, if I have, I'm talking about 64 bits. It's two to the power 64 that it, that is the range of the complete data type, and negative to the positive value. So this is how it works, Chavi. I hope this is clear to you now. So we have different types of data types in Java. We have long, we have integer, we have short, we have byte, we have double, with every particular data type conforming to different values or different things that I can utilize in my application. All right. So when I talk about this, uh, it is always like uh, if I have a requirement, all right, I have a requirement of using the data type integer. So I have the data type int for it. Similarly, I have a requirement of using the double which could also hold 
the dot decimal value so I have the value double so let's take an example of a data type here so what I'll do is I'll create a data type int h and I set it to a value 18 and let's just suss out this onto the bit con console here and I say the h of the uh, or say are uh, the value of the variable h H and I just output the value and what I need to do is I need to concatenate so the plus is the concatenation operator here which will concatenate the string with the variable here and if I just run as in Java application what I see is the value of the variable H and it says it is 18 right so this is how it is working up any any person having any doubts with the variable namings here similar to the int I can also have a boolean variable here boolean is nothing a, a variable which will actually hold the value it could be either true or it could be either false so if I say if my age is 18 alright so am I legal to vote so I say is legal to vote and I say I declare this as false and if my age is greater than or equal to 18 I say age is greater than or equal to 18 uh, what I'll do here is I'll just set this variable is legal to vote to true alright once I do that I can also output this variable along with the age so I say age plus and I say is legal to vote and I can just output this up alright so here it will be having a value true because since I, my age that I'm using in my application is equal to 18 and you can see all that all, all of you can see that the age of the variable is 18 and is legal to vote which says true that is he is legal to vote alright so this is how it works